welcome back to the Laravel Podcast Season 5, where every single episode is about a particular package that's commonly used in the Laravel ecosystem. And today we're talking about a package that is not Laravel specific, but it's still something that we really love and use very commonly. And it was one of the things when I asked people, hey, what do you often use? This was one of the ones that came up the most. And that is the League PHP League's CSV package. And before I introduce the maintainer of that package, I want to talk really quickly about what the PHP League is. So the PHP League, if you go to thephpleague.com, and I'll, we'll put it in the show notes, um, is basically a group of PHP programmers that want to create high quality packages that have some specific standards. So they follow all the PHP fig guidelines, and they have a couple other things that they say, we want to make sure that all of ours you know, can be used this way. And they kind of created their own set of a few packages and then invited other people who are maintaining or creating like high quality packages that um that that seemed like they would really fit within that kind of mindset to also kind of brand them as php league packages so we've had some folks on the um the podcast before we've definitely had frank de young on the podcast before and i think we may have had jonathan rank on the podcast yeah we had jonathan rank uh barry from the uh, uh i think that's it who's been on the podcast before so those are folks who have um, basically Main, who are making these great PHP packages. They're not Laravel specific, but they are very useful for Laravel. Um, so uh, today uh, we're going to talk primarily about CSV, but a little bit about other ones. And so I want to introduce the host. So today with me is Inyas Neyamagana with Terra. And Inyas is going to talk to us a little bit about the CSV package. But before we go there, Inyas, could you just say hi to the people and introduce yourself a little bit? Yes. Hi to everyone. Uh, so my name is Inyas Nyamagana Utera. So I am currently living in Belgium, but uh, I was born in Africa, in Rwanda, and then I travel a lot. Uh, I've been in a couple of uh, countries in Africa, and I've been in Switzerland and in France. And yeah, now I settled to live in Belgium. Uh, okay. I'm married. I have two kids. And that's about awesome. it about me. <laughs> and is your day job as a programmer? I assume. Yes. So my day job, uh, I've been programming in PHP since. Poof, I, I like to say I've been programming since uh, Forage was introduced in PHP. So if you know <laughs> okay, when that's in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And, Very cool. And I started in college. Uh, I was like doing the the website for the the alumni uh, from the mm -hmm. from where I was. I was doing uh, biology, molecular biology. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and my, my brother who was a, a developer, but not PHP, he handed over me, me a book about PHP and say, hey, for your website, you could learn this language. And it was PHP 3 at that time, I think. And since then I have been coding on and off and finally around 2010 i finally decided okay i'm gonna make it pro professional now and that's where it's i love that i'm now looking up the php release timeline because i'm wondering when i started using uh php i don't know if it was php 3 or php 4 so you might you might predate me but i had a similar experience of my brother uh, well, my brother did PHP and he coded in Vim on a Linux system. And so when I wanted to make websites and I learned HTML, this was pre-CSS, yeah. he's like, you got to learn PHP, you got to learn Vim, you got to learn to work in the terminal. So that's why I did it. Yeah. I'm trying to look at the history. Okay. So PHP forum came out in the winter of 1990. Oh no, P 1998. Okay. So yeah. So I started in PHP three as well. So we are, we are similar timelines here. I love this. Wow. <laughs> so PHP four came out in 1999. So yeah, I started in PHP three as well. So we're old. Yeah, <laughs> but I love it. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the CSV package that you um, created and maintained. So let's talk mm -hmm. about so for anybody who wants to follow it, of course, we'll put links to everything in the show notes, but it is, you know, basically the PHP league slash CSV. So, you know, we kind of have some questions we always go through. So let's just start with what is the elevator pitch for the CSV package? If somebody just has no idea and you got 30 seconds to tell them, what does this package actually do? What problem does it actually solve? Uh, if I had to pitch it really quickly, like in one minute, I would say that uh, League CSV is the equivalent to JSON encode, JSON decode. Okay. For CSV. Love it. Simple and easy, right? So if you are working with CSVs, and if anybody doesn't know, a CSV is sort of like a um, more standardized version of an Excel document. So if you think of an Excel document, if you've ever like opened up uh, any Microsoft document in a text editor, there's just all this crap everywhere. It's very Microsoft encoded, right? Well, CSV is just the data. It's a comma separated value, meaning 
for each of your rows, it's a new line. Mm -hmm. And for each of your columns, it's basically separated by commas, right? Comma separated yep. values. So CSVs are these very, very, very simple documents that just contain basically tabular data, right? And so I've found personally, and I'm curious if this is true for you as well, and yes, is that um, when I want to deal with programmatic data, like stuff that we're interacting with as a computer in a computer mm -hmm. that individual humans can also consume because mm -hmm. Excel can open CSV and save CSV numbers can open and save CSV Google Sheets can um, CSV is by far the best way because it's so simple and structured versus having to write something and read something that parses Excel. Exactly. That's primarily why I'm working with them has have you found that's kind of what why people are working with CSVs as well is because they're kind of simple and they're not specific yeah. to any company. Yeah, indeed, there's that. And there's also the fact that uh, to be fair, uh, when I started looking around and, and trying to come up with an idea with CSV, I was, um, so in my, outside of my day job, I usually play football. I think you call it soccer in the United yeah. States. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and there I was in a small championship and, and they were like every weekend they were sending the, the results and they were in Excel and they were containing mm -hmm. a lot of errors. And mm. at that time, I I didn't know how to correctly use Composer. I didn't know how to use uh, Spreadsheet, I think, or PHP Office or something like that. It was called before. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at, hey, if I could just convert this into CSV, then I know I can quickly fix it in PHP. Yeah. And it was like I was losing time every time having to convert it and doing something like that. And at some point, I said, no. I'm going to do a package because I'm also doing the same thing uh, at work where we were uh, generating reports and stuff like that. And as a matter of fact, the best format to generating report when you give, have to give it to, to other business is CSV. It's not Excel yeah. because CSV can be opened by so, multi, so many spreadsheet applications. But if you start yeah. doing something in, uh, in Excel or in, uh, in number, then you're restricting the people who can read your format. But if you yeah. do it in CSV, then everybody can read it. Yeah. So. And one caveat that I would make, and I would, I want to see if you agree with this is CSV is the best format for containing data. But if you're worried about passing, uh, formatting or tabs or, um, <laughs> sheets or formulas, mm -hmm. those things are difficult to have in CSV. So CSV is more like a data format, yes. whereas Excel and the numbers are more of like a presentation format on top of the data, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. If you want to send some data, you can do it in CSV, no problem. If you want to start adding more complexity, more logic into what you want to send, then CSV is not the best format to do it. Got it. Yeah. Um, so before we move on to the installation story, I want to say there is some inbuilt, um, some built in PHP formatting for CSV. You've got things like F get, F get CSV and stuff like that. Yes. So if anybody has never worked with those before, just go look up the PHP manual for F get CSV. And now you'll have an understanding of why having a package is <laughs> valuable. It's not an enjoyable syntax and it can't do many of the things that the CSV package makes very, very, very easy. Um, so it's not as if PHP inherently couldn't handle CSV at all. If this is more like this is going to make it a, a user friendly experience where it all has a very consistent yeah. API. Is that a good way of describing it? Yeah, exactly. That's a uh, link CSV is basically as it's a wrapper around PHP API to make it mm -hmm. simpler, to make it friendly and also to make it consistent. Mm, yeah, because there is a lot of, lot of inconsistency in the, yeah. in the behavior of the PHP uh, functions and yeah. I always understand people say, ah, oh, yeah, but the uh, BHP is buggy and stuff like that. And I always say people don't, do not, uh, people always easily forget that PHP is an evolving language and that there is no RFC for CSV, mm -hmm. which means that everyone, be it Microsoft, being uh, Apple, being even uh, PHP, everyone has his own definition of CSV. Mm -hmm. So what LeakCSV <laughs> tries to do is try to normalize things so that whoever created that CSV yeah. can be consumed by us. I love that. And um, 
again, I, I don't normally do this, but one of the things I want to note to folks is that it's it's like the JSON encode and decode for CSV, but there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with it. Um, and I know I'll ask you later about like edge case things, but some of the more common things, like uh, for example, like if you were working with um, fget CSV, you basically get like you're you're reading the CSV in as a stream, and mm-hmm. then you just for each over the lines, right? But yeah. with with the the CSV package, you get things like get header and that gives you just a certain like lines of headers or get records or you can say you know insert one line or insert yeah. all and there's all these convenient things that you could do with fget csv and fget csv and passing arrays around but they're not all in the same object right there's no kind of concept of a csv object in php yeah. whereas you have created that idea so you've got a writer that created or you have like you know basically you have like an entity that represents the csv exactly. that you're working with that you can do all these things with right yeah, 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 indeed. Yeah. And, and okay, the, the, um, go ahead. Yeah, and the, the the main gist of it was like, okay, I have this CSV, it's a document. How do I access this document? And what mm-hmm. do I do with this document? That's the, yeah. that's the basic idea. And how I do I that. access it? How do I add something? How do I remove something? How do, yeah, how do I play with it around? And that's that's how the, the, I, the, the full philosophy of the package is. I love it. Okay, so let's talk about our next common question, which is how do you install it, and are there any key setup steps, steps or dependencies? Leak CSV, like you said, is really a bare bone package. So you could even not use Composer. So you go to GitHub, mm-hmm. you download the, 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 the archives of whichever tag or version that you want, and there is a, an autoloader insta- with it. So you can use this autoloader, which is PS are for comp- uh, compliant mm-hmm. or you just yeah. use composer and there you have it it's ready to be used there's yeah. no nothing more complex than that there is yeah zero dependencies because yeah it's fully it's just fully, php yeah 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 i love it and it's not even like the f get csv and s put csv required you have a um you know, any special add-ons, like every version of PHP has these. Yes. And, and for those of y'all, you know, who, who don't know this, you literally just type composer require league, L-E-A-G-U-E slash CSV, and that's it. Yeah. So, that's- um, yeah, totally. Um, so uh, are there any lesser used features that are cool or any just kind of cool things you've seen people do with it? Or are there any features of it that we haven't talked about so far that you want to say, oh, I really like that you can do this or that with CSV? One of the things I, I liked about leak CSV is that I... No, when I when I try to build it, I try to build it to so f- the first version that nobody should look at because it's really filled with so much error. <laughs> was like, okay, I want to do a wrapper around uh, SPL uh, object, which is a, a SPL uh, class which is within the PHP core and that you can use to to write on CSV. And the more the version goes increasing, the less I try to be I I wrap better i think the, mm-hmm. the functionality so i had more and more uh, the php system inside the 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 code which mm-hmm. led me to seeing people asking me question and when they ask me the question i'm like hmm is it really possible to do that in leak csv and i look at the code and say oh yes indeed it's possible yeah i, I never thought about it but the way it is written <laughs> now it's possible and i say oh that's nice and Love that. one of the thing is uh I had a colleague because uh, he was using another uh, CSV package and he said, ah, but I have 9 million uh, rows and they're um, zipped. So I don't know what to do. Uh, should I first unzip it and then try mm-hmm. to put it in this? I, I was like, hmm. I, say, I, I was like, hmm, this is strange. Maybe I should do a feature where I can unzip and do stuff. And then I look at the code and I said, hmm, wait. And I see that um, in PHP, you have this function called uh, Jesit open that basically really? opens a zip file, an archive file. I had and no idea. <laughs> if you open it, you get a stream. You can stream it, yeah. And then if you and... use like reader create from stream, you open your stream and then LixiSV can automatically work on with your zip archive. So you don't even need cool. to unzip. Yeah, and you have all that the is very and cool. And if anybody's not familiar with streams, basically, if you imagine, you know, the vast majority of the time that you're working with League CSV, you've got these smaller documents and you just read the document, the whole thing's in memory, and you've got this kind of PHP object that represents that document yeah. that you're passing around. But 
like Inyas mentioned, what happens if you've got a document that's so big that you maybe don't want to open the whole thing at once because you might want to stop when you hit the right row, or you don't want to open the whole thing at once because it's going to use up so much memory and slow everything down or whatever else. Streaming is something that's built into the core of PHP that allows you to basically just pull things one line at a time. So it knows where you are in that file, but at any given moment, it's not holding the whole file in memory. It's only holding that particular line in memory. So whether or not you're dealing with zip files, League CSV makes it really easy for you to just say, this is a massive document and I want you to stream it to me. And you basically end up in a for each loop. And that for each loop, each one is only the one that's the only one that's been read at that point. And you can do whatever you want with it. And you can also stop the stop it. If you, you let's say you find the one you want 150 rows in, it's not going to read the remaining, you know, 5 million or whatever. Um, exactly. So but what you just introduced is the idea of streaming out of something that's in a zip file without actually yes. unzipping it on the file system. Is that right? Exactly. That's wild. <laughs> I yeah, had no idea you I could know, do that at all. I know, but I, at the moment I was like, hey, but yeah, you, I can do that. That's nice. And boom, yeah. it was done. And that's I, so I don't cool. know if I, yes, I told my colleague, I said, yeah, you can do that with leak CSV, but yeah, I, I, I should mention it somewhere in the documentation. I don't know, but uh, yeah, you can. Yeah practically use wow. an archive file without even opening it and boom you have that it. is very cool okay well that's a great answer to, to cool things people can do with it so the next question i have for you is are, do you have any development roadmap and do you need help from people because you know like in my experience C league is, C csv is kind of done but are, do you have mm -hmm. any like vision for the future or are you kind of like no it does what it needs to do and i'm happy with it um there is um okay. one thing i need to note is that if you look at the code base of the moment I tagged 9.0.0 .0 and mm -hmm. the code base of today, which is, I think, 9.8 something, mm -hmm. you will see that there has been a lot of rewrites. Okay. So for the, the end user, nothing has changed. But for yeah. me, a lot of things have changed. A good okay. example is like in, when in PHP 7.4, a new argument was added to F get CSV. And that okay. argument, which was welcome, is something that says uh, the escape character uh, mm -hmm. that can be empty. Okay. Hmm. Because prior to that, it was not empty by default. I think it was uh, the slash or the the other. I don't know how you could say it in English. The uh, the not not the the back the backward slash. And yeah, it was backslash. yes, the backslash. Mm -hmm. And it was mangling and. It was not good for interoperability with between. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, so uh, uh, it's not a bug for me. It's like they they fixed the issue by removing this uh, backslash. Got it. But if you do that, you need to be able in Leak CSV to understand that after seven point four, it can be empty, but before it cannot. Got it. So. When that feature was discussed on the PHP mailing list, uh, someone came to me and said, hey, can you do this in, 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 League P, uh, in League CSV because I'm using it a lot? And I said, hmm, let mm -hmm. me think. And I built a whole polyfill. Yeah, so very cool. Since PHP 7.2 up to 7.4, it was only polyfill, but nobody could see it. And yeah. in the newer version, because I stopped uh, supporting everything below 7.3, the polyfill is gone. Got but it. Nobody okay, can that's see it. Sense. Yeah. You see? So yep. the, the, the public API, I agree with you, is done. Yes. But, but the internals, you're still the doing The internals work. are continuing to be maintained yep. so that it can always do whatever it, 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 it needs to I love to that. Do. Yeah. So you're continuing to do work silently that allow us to all exactly. to ig ignorantly continue using the same public API. I love that. Exactly. And I, I just pulled up the um, the commit log between 9.8, which was January of this year, to today, yeah. and there's 52 commits. So you're clearly, uh, you know, as recently as three days ago. So you're clearly yeah, still yeah, working because, on this. Yes, because right now I'm doing two things. First, mm -hmm. I had to battle. Uh, let me rewind a bit. My my vision of the package is that leak CSV should not be coupled with, for instance, let's take the uh, Symphony or Laravel. Whenever they mm -hmm. release something, they need to be uh, in line, let's just say, with the PHP version. 
So yeah. they need to, to follow 8.0 or 8.1. And if there is a, something that goes wrong, like for instance, right now, I think everybody is pushing to go to 8.1 in mm -hmm. order to, to fix some issue with PHP. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, for leak CSV, for instance, like I said, something was fixed in 7.4, but nobody knows except for the Got maintainers. It. So it's a question for the maintainers to say, okay, which version of PHP should I uh, maintain? Yeah. And it should not be coupled with a release version specific to PHP, because otherwise it means that I should be on leak CSV, I don't know, 12 or something. Yeah. But the public API did not change. What has changed is the code inside so that everything keeps, keeps on working. Totally got it. Yeah. Okay. I love that. So and I mean, right this, you know, keep going. Keep going. So, so right now for me, I'm like, hmm, which version should I stop maintaining? Right now I know that I will not maintain 7.4. So that's, it's mm -hmm. a done. So if you look at the master right now, 7.4 is done. It's gone. Okay. 8.0. Oh, yeah, I see that. 8.0 is gone. So the next version, probably, I don't know when it will be up, but the next version, so 9.9, .9, I think, at the mm -hmm. time, will be 8.1 going forward. Okay. I'm looking at, um, we, at Titan, we have this website, phpreleases.com, that makes it really yeah. easy for me to see when each version comes out. And so I'm seeing, so 8.0 stops getting actual new releases at the end of this year, basically. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So that makes a ton of sense. Okay. Yes. But at the same time, I, I, I'm not leaving user behind because 9.8 still supports 7.4, 8.0, yeah. and 8.1. So yeah. I'm trying to have the balance. Like like you said, I'm the only maintainer. So I have yeah. to be able to maintain to make sure that all the fixes are correct and that I can yeah. maintain as much uh, PHP version that I can. Yeah. So I'm... In my mind, I'm like, okay, if I release the next version, let's just say in September or in October, it will be like 7.4 would be, I won't say dead, but more or less. 8.0 yeah. will be also in its way out, but I know that 8.1 and 8.2 will be there. So yeah. right now what I'm doing is like looking at all the change logs in 8.2 to understand if there is something changed in the behavior of CSV. And if something is changed, then I need to come up with a strategy to add it already some polyfill or something so that mm -hmm. when 9.9 .9 goes up, everything is fine for 8.1 and 8.2. Well, and one of the really nice things about that is you're, you're finding yourself in a situation where if let's say that people doing an old version of PHP are stuck on 9.8 of League CSV, well, the, yeah. the changes you're making in later versions are not new features. They're just things that work in 8.0 and 8.1, right? Exactly. So they, exactly. they, as long as the, the API that exists works on 9.8, they should be happy, right? Yeah. So you can just stay there yeah. as long as you need. Yeah. I love that. The yeah. only caveat is like, but that's uh, an, another philosophical uh, question is the reader and the writer in CSV are not final. So it means that for each version, whenever I want to deprecate something which is inside, I still need mm -hmm. to keep it. Got it. That's uh, that's that's a little bit of a, a challenge for you as a maintainer to just kind of remember where it is and what's depending yes. on what else and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's why if I have a roadmap, I know that at some point I want to release a 10 just to get rid of all the thing that is deprecated yeah. in the internal. I love that. <laughs> You're like, just, just so I can take all those things out of my brain and off of my exactly. shoulders, right? Exactly. But yeah. right now, even in 9.9, .9, sometimes there's stuff that I used to have, because if you look at some code, you will see that, or if this is a version PHP 7.3, 7 you can do this. If it's 7.2, you cannot do okay. this. So there is yeah. a lot of ifs everywhere. Yeah. And so, you just love to get rid of those and just exactly. make a nice new clean one. Exactly. Totally. And I mean, I'm a, I'm a very big fan of package maintainers maintaining backwards compatibility when it doesn't cost them a lot. And that doesn't mean sometimes it doesn't cost them a lot, right? Sometimes it's just costing us a lot and that's life. But I think a lot of package maintainers just say, well, it's the new and the hotness. So I'm just going to switch to it and everyone else can deal with it. And so as a package maintainer, I can really appreciate the amount of work that you're putting in to try and make sure that people who are on a somewhat outdated version of PHP are not now just stuck because they're, you know, their company's constraining them to do that. Exactly. Um, at the same time, 
at some point it's just going to make us miserable. Like at some point somebody's going to be like, "Hey, what about PHP five six? And you're going to say, "Sorry, man. You know, like, sorry, I'm not going to help you." So there's always a balance you got to walk, and I appreciate you walking that balance. And also, I wish you the best in getting to ten and being able to just you know let some of that old code go. Yeah, so. yeah. There's a lot of things that I uh, I was looking at the code. I said, "Oh God, damn! If I could remove that, they remove that, then remove that, but I cannot. So I need to keep it." And, uh... I absolutely believe you. Um, well, so since you do have some things that you are doing going forward, is there any help you need or is it all this stuff is so esoteric that really, you know, our help is just continuing to use it and love it? I mean, it's, can, can, are, can you help use any help on this project? Yes. Um, okay. Tell me. Simple one, but effective one. Um, like I say, I started a, I don't know if I said it, but I started a new job. And one of my new colleagues came to me and said, Hey, I, I, I love your package. I, uh, what can I do to help you? I say, listen, my English is bad. So the way I write it is bad. <laughs> so if hmm. you can only fix the typo, I will okay. be the happiest man in life. Oh, and, that's awesome. And he did it. Okay. And he went through all the documentation and he fixed the typo. And I was like, man, that's awesome. Because I would love not that. have been able to do it myself. Right. Uh, so typos, documentation, just yes, any of that sort uh, of stuff. Okay. Yes. Another thing is like, uh, for instance, the website, I did it like, I think five years ago or something. Uh, I don't know if people still love the website, how it is, but I'm not talking about the, the content. Hopefully the content is correct, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but at least the design and stuff like, uh, I want to do some, maybe some tailoring or stuff like that, but I'm really bad at it. I'm really bad at everything front end. So okay. uh, if someone wants to redo the website, he's welcome to do it. Uh, I'm okay. fine with it. So I, at, okay. at one point I wanted to do, to have a logo for the CSV, but yeah, again, I'm really bad at everything, which is GIMP and Photoshop and stuff like that. So got it. If people well, want I, to do that, I'm fine with it. Okay. Well, I, I think that there's at least one listener to this podcast who regularly designs uh, logos for open source projects. So I'm very curious whether Kaneko hears this. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, logos, design, documentation, yeah. catching yeah. typos, anything like that yes. totally makes sense. So you're going to keep maintaining the core, but if the rest of us can just help it be a little bit prettier and, or a little yeah, bit and, better and front also, end or whatever. Yes. And also, and also they can submit uh, features. Huh? I have no problems with submitting feature recently. So for the, for now in the master, I finally uh, made the uh, Lixis V a monorepo. So I added something that I have uh, built long time ago, but it was in a separate package and a, on a separate uh, organization. Uh, my mm -hmm. organization where I dump or everything, all my experiment, basically, uh, it was back amazing thing. And I added back to the, to the, to, to the main branch now to the main CSV and I created. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I, when 9.9 .9 goes out, I will also release something called CSV doctrine. Okay. So it's, um, just something to improve CSV, uh, usage if you already have doctrine on your system. Okay. Got it. Um, okay. how right now, but this is really, uh, like the baseline right now, right now is just, you can use doctrine collection to supercharge the way you want to filter your CSV. You don't need yeah. to do that if you are in the Laravel community, because in Laravel, you have something that did not exist like I think four or five years ago, which is lazy collection. Okay. Before I would always, always say to people, Hey, yes, use doctrine. But now that you have lazy collection, um, full disclosure, uh, before last year, I was not using Laravel at all. So I'm starting to use Laravel like for like three to four months now. Mm -hmm. And but I knew about collection and I knew that collection was based on array, but okay, lazy uh -huh. collection is based on generators. And those are more in line with leak, with leak CSV. Yeah, definitely. So today, for instance, if you want to filter and you don't want to use all the filtering of leak CSV, you can, but you, you just take your, for instance, let's go back to our, uh, just zip file of CSV of nine, my, nine million thingy. So mm -hmm. you take it. You open it using uh, Lixis V 
and then you give it to lazy collection oh, and then cool. you hold the full laravel filtering and stuff that you that you know. i love that and we actually just had uh an episode about lazy collections I'm trying to remember exactly when we'll try to link it in the show notes so we actually had an episode of this pretty recently and talking about how freaking amazing they are and i i had never worked with lazy collections prior to that episode so i'm i'm here for this i'm here for this iterator work and again it's just like like you're saying it's it's very similar to when you don't want the whole thing at once and i i kind of think that's the pitch that he made in the, the po podcast episode as well is it's like if you want to iterate over them where you only get the one at a time versus loading them all in collections so, exactly. but i'd never even imagined being able to tile the power of lazy collections into this so you're yeah. just making my brain do sparks right now <laughs> so yeah but the the, the equivalent you can do that with doctrine mm -hmm. using doctrine co collection you can do it and but because doctrine is a bit uh, different i had to to build a small wrapper around it so mm, it. okay got it yeah. another wild idea that i have right now is that uh i think it was in in version 9.6 or 9.7 i don't know i added an interface but prior to that there was no interface in league csv and now there okay. is one which is called a uh, tabular reader Basically, it means that leaks is with the reader, but also the, the result set that the one that you get after filtering, mm -hmm. they both share the same functionality and the same, um, the same feature. So it means that, but this is wild. Huh? I, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with it around right now, but I haven't finished with something that is stable, which would be okay. that you could use doctrine to manipulate a document like if it was a table. Okay. Hmm. That's really cool. Um, I'm just wow. in early stage. It might work. It might not work, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's a fantastic idea. And I, and it, one of the things that I've really enjoyed with stuff like CSVs and also just a lot of other kind of like um, things that are maybe not always at the forefront of things is when people imagine the idea of using these syntaxes, these APIs that we're used to using all the time, like, mm -hmm. for example, Doctrine, um, there's also a, a PHP package that, or Laravel package that does something very similar called Sushi, where you're using an eloquent style thing to deal with, um, what's it, the the in mem uh, SQLite databases, but they're okay. like in-memory SQLite databases or something. So it's sort of like you have all the value of working with um, Eloquent, so Laravel's Eloquent database system, without mm -hmm. actually having to worry about having your database set up because it's using it either in memory or just like a file system that's in storage or something. Whatever it is, it's so simple that you're not actually setting up your database or anything like that. So it reminds me of this a lot. It's like, just because we're working with the data uh, with the data store other than a traditional database doesn't mean we can't still have these really nice, expressive, um, you know, modern interfaces like you're yeah. talking about. So I think that's a really cool idea. Yeah. But like I said, it's an infant idea right now. I'm yes. just playing totally. around. Will it work? Will it not work? I don't know. Okay. Well, I know we have a few more to talk about. So um, let's let's move on to those real quick. So normally each of these is only about one package. But uh, when we were talking in the beginning, you mentioned two other packages that you maintain that I just figured, why don't you just, we won't do the whole you know set of five questions about them, but can mm -hmm. you just tell us a little bit about your two other packages that you want to share about? Yes. So the first package is a uh, league URI. So it's also a package on the, on the league uh, package. And that one mm -hmm. was built. Uh, whew, what happens that the first company I worked in was uh, more or less an, ad an advertising company. And they were receiving like thousands of URI and they needed to rewrite them every time. Mm. And even though PHP is a web uh, application language, it doesn't have a URI class. Right. So I try to model uh, in iteration the what I would call the perfect uh, URI class. Mm -hmm. And um, I had one version. And between, I think, version 2 and 3, uh, there was PSR 7, which come with its own uh, URI. Mm -hmm. But because I disagree a bit with how PSR 7 is working, I create, I still continue with my package, but I added in that package, a uh, PSR URI compliant. Got it. But still I have my URI, which is independent. So the, the signature is identical to the one of PSR seven, okay. but we, disagree, but we disagree on what I, what most people would say is details, but for me, it's not details. Mm. So the main detail is like, for me, any component 
can be nullable, except okay. for the path. But in yeah. the CSR7, they are all string every time. So you cannot make the really? distinction between uh, a component which is empty and a component which does not exist or is not present. Okay. That's the first distinction. And the second distinction is that the, the URI from PSR7 is only requiring to support HTTP and HTTPS. All the other schema are not oh, required. Okay. But my URI uh, supports all the all the possible schema that you want. Okay. Those things are like the- FTP and mail to, I guess, and other stuff like that? Yes, exactly. Mail to, uh, FTP, FTPS, and stuff like that. All those are okay. supported by the... Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, and if you... Uh, we'll, we'll link it to the show notes, but if you go take a look, you can... Um, if you've ever worked with the um, the URI management in JavaScript, it's going to look very familiar for exactly. you, for example. Exactly. Yeah, you can give it a string, and you can say, give me the scheme, or give me the host, or give me the exactly. value of Q, and it'll, it'll either give you nothing, or it'll give you the value, or whatever. I love that. Yeah. A, a fun fact is that... That and that's the 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 I don't know if it's the beauty is that you have the you have the RFC for the URI, and then you have the definition of the URI from the W what what is the name the what WG the, with, the web working group or whatever that one is yes yes mm-hmm. but those two are not uh, they are not compatible or they are <laughs> oh, more really? or less compatible but they have differences right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you're trying to cover both of them, right? In yours, exactly. So if you try to cover to cover both of them, then you sometimes you end up in a situation like, ah, yep. okay, what should I, I do? I have to make a decision here, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love that. Exactly. So, but again, yeah. this is another one of these examples where, like, for the really simple aspects of URL parsing, I'm like, oh, I could just do that myself. But then I understand anytime I've looked at any of those, the RFC or anything like that, I go, oh, there's aspects of. URLs that I've never considered. And some of them are often very simple. Like, for example, the idea of having an array of entries. Like, I know about that, but I wouldn't always think about it until later. But some of them are even more complex, things that I don't even know exist. And so for you to be an expert who fully has internalized all of these RFCs and the PSR7, and you did it, and now I just have to, like, I get to benefit from your work. Like, that's what I love about open source packages is I don't have to become an expert now, right? Yeah, indeed, indeed. And uh, another thing that I, I think... But that's, I, I'm, I, for me, maybe it's because I'm curious, but I think that one thing that I like because I maintain all those packages is that every time I do, I also learn something. Mm-hmm. So you start you start saying, okay, uh, I'm going to be well, like, uh, yeah, okay, whatever Peach is doing is bad. I'm going to do it better. But then you realize that your better is not that better and that what PHD does even if it has some shortcoming, mm-hmm. you see that the people who did it had thought about a lot of things. Yeah. So yep. you become a bit humble first, <laughs> and then yep. you realize that the world is like, it's not only PHP, it's all the other languages and how all the other languages interpreted you, right? I was like surprised the first time when I said, huh, so Java do like this and Python do like this. And PHP do, does like this, and Ruby does like this. You mm-hmm. have four ways of understanding a query string. Yeah. So and which again, one the fact is that you've done that means I don't have to now. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but if you like, I say I was working in, in advertisement, and we were receiving like you know in advertisement you have your URI and then in the query string you have another URI which is encoded and then you have yep. another one which is encoded in the encoded and yep. then you're like hey which one how do I decode all that uh-huh at that moment you will say okay i will use URI love that because URI handle all that for you very cool so, um i should have named this before but just like um the last package just like csv PHP does have a native function for parsing URLs, parse yes. underscore URL. So that's what you were referencing when you said the way PHP yes. does it. But again, it's now, I, I guess I should ask, is the URI package built on parse URL or no? No, it used to, it no longer does. Okay. Why? Because parse URL is a fast parser. Meaning that, for instance, if you have a, a router, Yes, I would say definitely go with parse URL okay. because the router will only deal with the path, let's just say. But if you really want to have something which is valid, 
then I would say don't use sparse URL. Got it. Okay. Because sparse URL, it's parsing, it's not validating. Okay. That's helpful. That makes a ton of sense, actually. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, okay. And so, another thing, and another thing, parse URL was built prior to the RFC. Oh, okay. Got it. So if most of wants the them... shortcoming, go ahead, no, go ahead. Most of the shortcoming of parse URL is because it was built prior to the RFC. Okay. And if anybody wants to know about these RFCs, if you just go to uri.thephpleague.com, which we'll link in the show notes, you can see a link yeah. to the RFC, you can see a link to the URL living standard, and you can see a link to the PSR7 um, interface. So all these things that Agnes is talking about, um, you can, if you really want to nerd out about those things, there's a link to all of them there. Exactly. Yeah. And again, if you want to change the website to make it better, <laughs> I'm open <laughs> for yours. <laughs> Got it. Love it. All right, so let's move on to the last package of the day and then wrap it up because we're getting close on time. So what's your last package you want to share with us? The last package is Period, which is uh, another package that I built based on my previous uh, work, which was basically I have a report and business saying, I want a report for the last month. And I had a big debate with uh, business when I said, what do you, what do you define last month? And some say last month is the first day of the month up until the last one included. And I was saying, no, last month is the first day of the last month until the first day of the current month. And yeah. there was a big debate and they were like, yeah, but why are you thinking like that and this? And I say, yes, but if you include the last day of the previous month, then you're leaving out maybe a microsecond or mm -hmm. a second or something you need to include the first invalid date. Let's just call it like that. So that yeah. you are sure that whatever you do, you will always have the correct uh, period, the, the correct interval. Mm -hmm. And based on that, I, I created a simple value object, which has the first date and the last date, and that can do a lot of calculation around that. And yeah, now the value object got increased with a lot of uh, methods and a lot of, uh, a lot of things like a template and a, and the gun chart to visualize the period and stuff like that. Got and it. yeah, it's really powerful. And the one thing that I like about it is like it is um, how do you say it works with daytime immutable only, mm -hmm. and it works with any type of daytime implementing uh, object. So it can work with carbon. It can okay. work with Kronos. It can work with whatever daytime package that you want because it only cares about uh, the interface and PHP base uh, functionality. Love it. And those Kronos and Carbon just increase those functionality, but they will work. Okay. And, and for anybody who's not familiar with these, there is like an inherent PHP. Once again, so there's P inherent PHP class for date intervals. There's an inherent PHP class for date time stuff like that and even for periods but uh, once again if you go to the documentation period.theleaguephp.com you're going to see the fact that like working with those systems is is often very difficult and many of us have never run into a circumstance where we need them so i built a couple calendar type tools so i really need to deal with them and once you need them you're very grateful that they exist right you're like oh my gosh how could i imagine possibly saying one hour before and after this thing or one day before and yes. after this when you how are you going to handle you know, the end beginnings and ends of months, like you said, how are you going to handle the beginnings and ends of years? It becomes very complicated when you think about those things. So this package yeah. is really a wrapper around a PHP function that many of us don't even know exists. But if we did work with them, we would see like many of these other ones, that's very difficult to work with. And the yeah. benefit of this is you're basically giving us a very easy and reasonable syntax for common tasks that you would do if you're dealing with these date periods or sequences to make it very mm -hmm. easy as possible while you're not re recreating the wheel, right? You're just giving us access to easier ways to work with the existing PHP versions, right? Exactly, exactly. The, the thing is, what, what I try to do with my package is I don't try to hide PHP uh, mm -hmm. functionality. I just want to make it easier for accessibility, which means that it. if someone wants to have something more complex and stuff, oh, go, please go ahead. You can use my package because they will expose everything PHP has to do. But if you just want to, like we always say, uh, 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 
to 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 answer to the eighty percent questions. Well, yeah, you can use this package, and eighty percent of your answer will be there, and you don't have to think too much about it. Yeah. So that's yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Like I said, for each of those package, I learn. So it's yeah. not it's not just me saying okay, I I know everything. No. That's why there are iteration. That's why there are, it's not version one, it's version five or version 10. Sometimes people laugh, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, version 10, like in, uh, in, Node, uh, in Node community where you can have version 12 or something like that. No, it's nine because I had to go to version nine to get to a stable API with something which resemble how people will use it. Yeah, totally. So it's trial and error. Yeah. So, and I, I think that... Right. Most uh, maintainers, uh, I think they're humble enough to say, oh, yes, okay, uh, I made some. But sometimes people may think that, yeah, they think that they're higher. No, no, no. We try to stay humble, and there are mistakes. And mm -hmm. if you look at the code, then, yes, there are mistakes sometimes. That's why there are bug trackers. Right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we try to improve, uh, and that's all. We're yeah. just developers like everybody else. Uh, that's mm -hmm. Well. It's interesting because you and I didn't know each other um, prior to this, but I've used your packages and I can tell this is someone who's creating packages in a way that I value. And therefore I was like, oh, we got to get this in. And uh, granted, people also all said, let's bring the CSV package in. But I got excited because I think you can often tell a lot about the mindset of the person who's creating a package by using it because you see... Mm -hmm oh, when XYZ needs to be handled, has it been handled? Or when you go to the issues and somebody's asking, can you really help me with this thing? Um, you know, how does this person respond? And time after time after time, I would see you interact with the community or with the API or whatever in ways that that show that you have these, these thoughts where you say, oh, I can make a mistake. I might need to do it a little bit better. Or um, I need to consider both this RFC and this other one. So I just want to say thank you for being an example of how to be a package maintainer that really walks all of these balances that we're talking about really well between making sure you implement every single technical standard, you build something that's really manageable and easy for people to use. And you're constantly asking the question of like, what's the best thing I can do today to basically like, you know, uh, make it the best for the people today and tomorrow. So totally yeah. appreciate that. Thank you for any, and I think that if anybody else is a package maintainer or as aspiring package maintainer, they should just listen to the way you're talking about this. Cause I really love your approach to these things. So yeah. thanks. So I know we're like super, super, super late. We're way past time. So it, before we cut, is there anything else you want to share about this or anything else? And if not, um, how can people follow you and support you? Uh, they can follow me on Twitter. Mostly I am on Twitter. Uh, they can, yeah, just subscribe to, to, to the packages, look at how the packages are involved. And like I say, the, the best compliment they can have is people opening a uh, question uh, sending PRs. It's not because your PR is not accepted that what you did is not worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Because I know that there is a contribution guideline that say, oh yeah, you, your PR needs to have uh, needs to, to 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 follow this and to needs to be green everywhere and stuff like that. But I have a couple of occasions accept some PRs that were not green mm -hmm. because that. I, I put myself in the shoes of someone submitting a PR because I always, I also do submit PRs to other packages and to other things. And one of the best uh, compliment that you can have is someone that say, Hey, I see what you try to do. I think I could make it better, but I will merge your PR so that in the history of the package, we know that you're the one who introduced it. I love that. I love that. So and I, th I, I, I remember sometimes I was telling to people, I will merge your work and work with it. I will maybe improve it or make it different, but I want your commit to stay in the history. Love that. That's really cool. Because it's a, it's a way also to show people gratitude because they try to do something. Yeah. Sometimes, okay, you, you're forced to say, oh no, this will not go into the packet because it's YZ. Yeah. But if it can go, but I won't say no because he forgot a comma or something like that. Right, totally. Or because yeah. the coding style is not passing. Hey, yeah, good. It's not I love that. big deal for me. One, once again, yet another reason why I appreciate you. So, 
Uh, well, last question, because there's one thing you didn't cover here. If people want to give you money, is there a way for them to ah. give you money? Yes, uh, I think I have, a, I, have a Git, uh, I have a sponsorship on GitHub. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really bad at all that. So, like I always say, I'm bad at marketing myself. So, yeah. I, I have one. Uh, so, yeah. The, what I would say is that if you, con- if you sponsor me, you're not sponsoring only CSV. Mm-hmm. You're sponsoring all the packages. Love it. We didn't talk about the, for instance, the PHP domain parser that uh, that was built by Jeremy Kendall. And mm-hmm. at some point, he told me, "Hey, can you take over the maintenance?" I said, "Yes, why not?" Because I was using it for URI, mm-hmm. and I'm still maintaining it up until now. I even released, I think, a version six like last year or something. Mm-hmm. But like I say, if you sponsor me, you're not just sponsoring Lixius. You're sponsoring all the packages that I'm maintaining. Wow, I love that. And uh, we'll make sure that the link to your sponsorship page is in the show notes. But for anybody just listening who wants to type it, it's github.com slash sponsors slash nyamsprod, N-Y-A-M-S-P-R-O-D, which is also the same uh, username for Twitter. And all of these links will be in the show notes. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, I cannot thank you enough for the work you've done on all these packages, the things you've shared with us about these packages, but also the things you've shared with us about how to be a good open source maintainer. I think this is a really fantastic episode that I'm going to really kind of encourage people to listen to just for, Hey, what does it look like to be a great person in open source? So thank you. And yes, for being that for us. I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right. And for the rest of you guys, we'll see you all next time. Okay. Bye-bye.